Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Hitman 3. If you enjoyed this video, please brand the phrase subscribe to Modest Pelican on everybody's forehead, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. So welcome back to the game where the developers constructed a deep stealth and disguise mechanic so that players could completely ignore it and go around slapping French maids with a fish. Today we are traveling to China to eliminate Hush, who's known for people trafficking and organ harvesting, which is really dark, but also inspiring, I guess, as it's undeniably ambitious. Our second target is Imogen Royce, who was bullied in school and then pulled out of the education system so she could be experimented on, leaving her physically and mentally scarred. That doesn't sound like a great childhood, but my mum named me Jeff and people used to always say, my name Jeff, so I can relate to her struggle. We'll be bringing in with us a tranquilizer gun, three electronical key hackers, a meaty bone, and a great attitude as Agent 47 will do anything to complete this mission except run faster than a casual jog. I immediately come across some homeless people seeking shelter from the rain. I decide it's best to test my tranquilizer gun and so I shoot a dart into one of the homeless men. This was a questionable choice because it's at this moment I realise I was only given two darts. I proceed to rob his friends of what little they own. It's not ethical but it's a victimless crime relative to the double murder that's about to take place. I make my way into the city and can't help but feel a little jealous as everyone has an umbrella but me. These guys are talking about the local homeless people being used as lab rats for experiments and then acting insane afterwards. Wholesome. I find a crowbar and then this man says he's going to volunteer for the project. I decide to follow him. I was actually at the shops in real life yesterday and this guy asked me for money. I had $20 in my pocket and I didn't want it to just go towards crack and alcohol so I gave it to the homeless guy. I don't think there's anything more motivating than a disenfranchised man harassing someone's wife. My guy takes quite the lengthy late night stroll and eventually I decide to take a risk and knock him out. I hide the body in a dumpster and become homeless 47. If I can find the experimental location, maybe I can pose as a lab rat and sneak inside. I start searching buildings and find myself in a restaurant. That man in the suit is a member of the board and here to inspect a facility after he's had dinner. Perfect. More importantly, I spot a booty for my thumbnail. I don't like to whine on my channel, but it's been hard to find booties in Hitman 3. One of the missions was set in Dubai for God's sake. Finding a good booty in Dubai is harder than finding exposed ankles in Saudi Arabia. The bathroom here is disgusting, no wonder the place is so empty. I do find some rat poison and then decide to see what's taking dinner so long. Quite a ballsy play, but I just sneak into the kitchen and prepare the big girl's bat meal myself, of course adding in the rat poison. I ring the service bell and the chef stands around confused for a moment. Fortunately, he's not an overthinker and he just goes and delivers the meal. The plan goes perfectly as the board member heads to the bathroom where I proceed to slit his throat with a knife I stole from the kitchen. Honestly, pretty unnecessary. I could have easily subdued him peacefully. I hide the body for now as I want to properly scout the city first. The key to Hitman games is patience, thorough exploration, and then failing at those first two steps and just killing everyone. I find an apartment building and break into one of the units. The feng shui is frankly terrible. The owner comes home and I panic and stab her in the stomach. It kind of serves her right, this place is disgusting, but I've really got to try and start limiting civilian casualties or my rating will be worse than the decor. The apartment upstairs seems like the place to be, but against all odds I can't guess the code. Fortunately they left the window open and I sneak in effortlessly. I head into the bedroom and listen to the answering machine. I learn that the guy's throat I slit back at the restaurant was staying here. I also find his P41 workplace safety form which is great as nothing says impressive assassination like completing paperwork correctly. As I'm leaving the building, I notice a man has come home. And probably the husband of the woman I stabbed which is truly awful. He's busy cleaning up for her, it's sad to see. I decide to give him all the money I stole from the homeless people earlier. His wife's dead but his coin purse is now full. I'm like Robin Hood but rather than stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, I give to the poor and then also murder the poor. I head back to the restaurant and change into the board member's suit. It's time to go and inspect a facility and my tour guide is going to be Booty Girl which is a welcome surprise. I consider tranking that ass but think better of it as it would likely blow my cover. She proceeds to have the world's longest chat with me in the rain. Way to think it through, we're both now drenched. After 10 years we head inside and this place is no joke although Agent 47 couldn't be looking more self-conscious right now. My guy needs a hug. 
She asks for my P41 workplace safety form and I give it to her like a boss. This is peak gameplay, I'm so immersed right now. The tour goes well as I learn about what they do here. Basically, they're analysing human behaviour so they can accurately predict what someone will do next. So for example, if you were to watch my videos with someone, the software would predict that they'd immediately have sex with you. Don't watch my videos with your dad. And then all of a sudden I'm introduced to my first target, Imogen Royce. She wants to show me her software and honestly she's got a pretty good booty too. Wow, I'm really objectifying women here. I'll make sure to objectify a few men too to help balance things. At least the staff around here are friendly as this girl in the red waves at me. I feel like Agent 47 needed that. Overall a pretty great tour and then all of a sudden it's over and I'm escorted from the premises. I probably should have planned an assassination of some kind as that's my job, but at least we've scouted the area. I change back into the homeless clothes. From what I've learned, there's a place called The Block which is where I can go to become a test subject. I locate a great little karaoke bar which is empty. There's nothing sadder than a small business struggling, especially not dead homeless people. After a bit of looking, I find The Block. At first glance, I feel as if they definitely take sanitary health seriously. The guards welcome me with open arms and shows me to the interview room. I really hope I get this job as it would be a real blow to my self-esteem if I was rejected as a homeless test subject. I'll be honest, this building isn't really giving off a professional vibe. I step up to get evaluated and this last tells me that they've already got enough test subjects. All I wanted to do was have my organs harvested and sold on the black market but apparently there's no demand for thick kidneys anymore. She does say I can have an apple though, so at least my fibre intake for the day is sorted. While no one's watching, I sneak outside, break into the fuse box and turn off the power. When Bill Nye comes to investigate, I clock him over the head with my meaty bone. It's no fish, but it's still impractical and therefore amusing to me. My new disguise allows me to access the upper levels and there is some weird shit going on up here. That could have been me and I'm a little jealous. What do these clowns have that Agent 47 doesn't? I decide to try and free one of my homeless bros and this is the stuff of nightmares. I manage to get to the top floor and there he is, big girl Hush, my second target. He seems to be in some kind of experimental machine where he enters a subject's brain. Wholesome. There's security everywhere so we'll need to get creative. I head into the bathroom and find potentially the hottest guy I've ever seen in my life. He's even got a barcode on his head, what an erotic individual. Objectifying a man complete. Everything is coming together mission wise too as I take subject A's place. It didn't even slit his throat so we're growing as a person too. I tell the assistant I'm ready to go but I'm nervous as these scientists are incredibly unprofessional. They're running this entire operation out of a glorified crack den and they can't tell the difference between a Caucasian and an Asian man. Free apples though. Hush is very eager to mind battle me and I must say this is quite sci-fi for a hitman game. He tries to enter my mind but I'm easily able to overpower him. He wants to turn the machine up to maximum power but the assistant says it's too dangerous. I proceed to slit her throat with a tiny katana I found in the office while Hush and his security detail are on break. I also slit this guard's throat because he's isolated and it can't hurt to thin the herd down a bit should things go south. There's no great places to hide the body so I just toss it out the window. I hear screams from the street below and realise I've tossed the corpse right out the front of the struggling but inspiring karaoke bar. That poor man can't catch a break. Hush comes back and is ready to go again. This time with the machine at full power and I give him the old fashioned double fist air pump to send him over the edge. He gets a brain aneurysm as I kill the dodgy malacca with my mind. Who's not worthy of having their organs sold now Hush? GG easy. It's honestly quite an awkward moment and a guard decides it's best if I leave. He escorts me from the premises. One target down but how are we going to get Imogen? I feel like a bit of a crazy man running through the streets of China in a hospital gown so I change back into my suit. I also learn that Agent 47 has had an umbrella this entire time and just chooses not to use it. This mother f I only know one way into the facility so I head for that entrance. I finesse the guards and somehow remember the key code from the answering machine. I sort of just stroll in and it's alarming how much these guys rely on one security pad. I can't stay in these clothes forever as guards are around and I'm also getting the floor wet which is quite inconsiderate. I easily get into the tier 1 area but security has tightened and I can't get past. There's an air conditioner unit for the break room and so I sprinkle rat poison into the vent and turn it on. Given I'm still undisputably the number one Christian prank channel on YouTube, it's good to be back pranking again. 
while Big Sauce is throwing up his stomach enamel, I choke him out. I do, however, almost get played by the automatic sensor doors. The sensor doors once crushed my little sister and they molested my father. I hide the body and take his suit. I am now an analyst. Step one complete, I've got a bit more freedom. Now I just have to isolate Imogen. I learn that I can use my camera to send employees on break and I decide to go for a second Christian prank. I hack all of their computers and when Imogen arrives, she's not happy no one's working. She heads over to the break room to tell them off. I then activate the air conditioning again, poisoning them all. It's just the exact same prank again, which is lazy, but hopefully won't affect my number one ranking. Filling people's lungs with rodent aside is good clean fun, but it won't actually kill them. I need a better angle. I find the security room and more importantly, the armory. I grab a remote controlled explosive, but there's a camera pointed directly at me. I need a security disguise. I lure a guard over to the bathroom with my tactical meaty bone and he feels compelled to see why the sink is turned on. I then put my tiny katana, which is my new favorite thing in the world to use. Of course I turn the sink off afterwards because we can't be wasting God's nectar. I'm now able to take all the guns, flashbangs and explosives my heart desires. I figure with the amount of non-target casualties we've already had, it can't hurt to raise the body count a little more. I throw a flashbang at this guard's head. I then immediately turn and do the same to big boy over here. The two guards in the lounge hear the explosion and I gun them down while also flashbanging myself. A true tactical masterclass if ever I've seen one. With the room cleared, I'm able to disable all the security cameras in the building. As long as no one looks too closely at the floor or needs a new gun, we should be sweet. I also grab a briefcase with an assault rifle in it. For any new viewers, I have this obsession with briefcases in this game, so this pleases me. I'm going to take an educated guess that I'm probably not going to get the silent assassin rating, so I throw the remote explosive right near Imogen and detonate. She takes the explosion like a champion and just gets right up. Lockdown is initiated as they rush her to a safe place, wow. Given all the nearby guards are dead in the armory, I decide to clean this up before the others arrive. Imogen Royce eliminated, and I even grab the other assault rifle out of the briefcase and give her another couple of clips because she is a very tough and very big girl. Zero stars, which is harsh but fair. Lads and lasses, I've started a new Grand Theft Auto roleplay series on the Papa Pelly channel, and I think you'll really enjoy it. I've only just started playing roleplay, but it makes for some of the funniest moments I've probably ever uploaded to YouTube. The first two episodes are live now, and I'll link the Papa Pelly channel in the top comment. Thanks for watching, you absolute legends, I love you. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.